Ingo Architect Control. WSP analysts are strategy as space scale. So the five stakeholders coming together and we'll see what this combination of skills has generated. It's you, Frederick Kelly. Most welcome. Good morning. Um, it's great to be here. Um, we've assembled a team from UK, from uh, Sweden, and from Denmark. Um, and we really look forward to, uh, to this week. It's been a fantastic week, exhausting, but uh, inspiring. Um, our diverse team had an interesting, uh, made some interesting observations. The first one was most of when we flew in, to, uh, we found it to be a very green city. Uh, with lots of water. And yet when we came to the ground, we saw very little green and we saw very little water. Um, as far as the city is concerned, it's got lots of industrial legacy. We also heard, though, that 2,500 people were employed in that old industrial legacy, very small. Um, it's a city of elegant neighborhoods. Um, it's multicultural. We've seen that on the street but actually fairly segregated. It's highly skilled, very intelligent, well-educated people here. And yet, the fact that it's going through this process indicates that there are some issues. So some lost, there's been some lost opportunities along the way. In looking for the drivers, we identified social concerns. Um, it's a city divided socially, economically, and, and gender. Um, the, the ladies in our teams, they, they definitely uh, confirmed that. Um, it's a city divided physically, uh, the river, the rail, the roads, it's oversized infrastructure for the scale of the city right now, for the, for the industry which it's currently serving. And the city has a, 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 needs to find an identity. It, it's um, it's the 21st century economy is going to be very different from the last uh, century economy. And, and climate change, and I will come back to climate change in a moment, but definitely it needs to uh, adjust to climate change, but perhaps not as sensationally as as uh, some of the press coverage in the UK. Uh, and, and, and all of that really is, I think, indicative of a loss of competitive position. And we've seen that uh, in um, nationally and regionally. Um, Gothenburg has lost out. Uh, it's now behind Malmo in, in many indicators. But the River City site is, a, is a, an interesting opportunity. It's, um, it's a very large site. It's in the middle of the city. It's already embraced within the city plan. It's embraced within the regional plan. Um, so that's a great start. Um, River City, though, must be a center for new regional economy. It's got to be uh, a focus for social inclusion. It's got to heal spatially. It's got to stitch the city back together again. Um, but River City area has, has many advantages. As I say, it's at the center of the city. It's got access to the river. <coughs> and the other key point is it's got a large percentage of the land is in public ownership. And that's incredibly important when it comes to trying to do something. It has got a lot of control or potential control. And it's got a potentially strong, despite the negativities regarding transport and disconnect, it's potentially, if the right decisions were made, it's got potentially a very interesting and uh, opportunities for for very high quality uh, transportation and utilities. Um, we've looked, we focused on some, some of the new economy for Gothenburg. That's not to forget how important the auto industry is and logistics to the city and many others and the new economy uh, in the total uh, science park. But we focused quite deliberately on some of the new economy because many initiatives are already underway for the old economy. Um, we believe, with a strong focus, that uh, River City can attract about half of the new jobs created, about 45,000 people. Um, we've met with industry, we've met with uh, academic institutions, and we've tested one of these ideas. We've tested actually a number, but I'm, I'm showing you one of them. We've, we're talking about an integrated healthcare center. And uh, why, why health? Well, uh, all over the world, including Sweden, healthcare is in trouble. It's got inflation at about 7% per year, and, it's, and normal inflation is about 
to 3%. So actually, very quickly, we're getting older, and so we, we're not going to be able to accommodate that. Um, pharmaceutical industry is in trouble. It, can, it, doesn't, it doesn't produce the blockbuster drugs that it did before. So in fact, this idea of, of pharmaceutical being an industry and, and healthcare being a service, these things are going to merge. And we're looking at this actually anyway, and it's quite interesting how coming together in, in, in Gothenburg this week, we've, we've had a coalition of, of ideas coming from Sweden and coming from, from the UK. So we see that uh, an interesting opportunity exists between suppliers uh, to produce this integrated product service development center, and that can create businesses within its own right and create lots and lots of spin-offs. We see social inclusion as not specifically addressing uh, inclusion per se. We see actually economy and jobs as the most crucial part. It's easier to get social inclusion in work than it is in, in uh, uh, recreation, and it's, le it's most difficult in housing. So you can actually start at where it's, where it's easiest. So actually creating jobs for people is the best way to actually improve social inclusion. And we see that as a top-down and bottom-up. Top-down, we see this, the existing businesses in the city and we see the, the government of the city. We see them coming together to create that. We also see bottom-up, and you'll see some more later on what I mean about that. It's about the new arrivals, making them welcome. It's about looking at the disadvantaged groups. What we know is that new arrivals are, are generally around the world about three times more entrepreneurial than the indigenous population. So um, we also see the events and, and recreation as being very important to that. You know, 3.5 million arrivals per year in the city. And we see culture and, and the, the very large part that culture plays within the city. Um, now I'd like to address the issue of, of um, of environment and, and infrastructure. Actually, Gothenburg is one of the most sustainable cities in the world. Most of its energy comes from, uh, from um, hydro and from, um, and from nuclear. So it's, it's actually a fairly carbon-free energy production. Yes, yes uh, hydrocarbons are still used in cars, but there's, a, there's quite a move to, to push to 40% model split to, to public. Um, so, uh, and, and the issue of, of climate change is also an interesting one. The issue, I think, is sea level rise, not massive flooding. And, and so, so the, 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 I'm sorry for the press if they're here, but I think it's less dramatic than the sort of pictures that have been, that have been in the press. We have those in London too. Um, so I think actually, it, it, as long as we make the change, it's addressable in a progressive way. Investment, of course, is needed in the environment, in contaminated land, and on, on the, the sea defenses to some extent. Investment is needed in local infrastructure, but large-scale infrastructure is really in play. And investment is required for bridges, trams, and, and congestion charging to help with that model split. Looking briefly at, at the, we have adopted a very strong evidence-based approach. We're looking at route accessibility, we're looking at place accessibility, and district accessibility. And if we look at the, we've analyzed the sort of the, the um, the proposal that we made, and we looked at today, and we looked at 2030, and we've taken, a, as I say, an analytical approach to this. And looking at spatial accessibility, you will see red lines mean much higher levels of accessibility. Um, so you can see it's, it's uh, quite uh, important there. Looking at uh, a proximity to parks, we can see that actually very strongly, um, the, the, green, the green is showing the higher proximity to parks. Blue is, 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 is bad, and looking at the Local markets, you see the, the red is good. So we have, we have a, a very strong um, sort of improvement in, in, in local market. Now I'll take you through a series of shots looking at different things as they would happen from 2012. I don't think it's realistic to start, to start on Monday because I think you have, a, you have an engagement process to go through, but, but I said definitely 2012, you should be able to start. We see a temporary event space. We've met with the city, the, the people who organize the tourism here, and they don't have enough space for the, for the incoming uh, attraction. So there's, there's a real opportunity there. We see bottom-up activity, a uh, business. Uh, we were told that even at the university at, at Chalmers, that actually that most businesses don't have the necessary support when they start up. They, they many fail uh, at startup phase. And we see there's already some housing designated at back of time. So we think this can start, and it's very, very cheap. We, we see on, on the event side, you could put a floating barge in there and you could actually organize many, many events right now. It's, it's very, very simple. 
we see that creating about 500 residents and about 300 jobs. Okay, by 2015, there's a new bridge. Um, we see extending the avenue uh, to the back of land. This is incredibly important. That's a pedestrian bridge, a cycle bridge, and a public transport, but no cars. We don't want to bring cars into the city, in through the middle of the city, because that's what we'll be doing. It's creating congestion in the city. We see that integrated healthcare center. We see the link to tobacco plan. We see the city park and the Mashtugat uh, housing um, when the, the ferries are relocated. That would create in total uh, 5,250 jobs, and, uh, sorry, residents and about 5,000 jobs. By 2020, we see three, three new bridges. So replacement for the existing bridge, which we know has to, be, has to be replaced in any case. So that bridge would be in addition to this low level bridge because we see the, 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 the two things are, one is about heavy infrastructure. Uh, the second bridge is, these bridges are largely about, around pedestrians. We see a new, river, a new uh, park pier. We see uh, a 2021 arena. Again, we were told that that's needed. Lower road, uh, lower, we see the lowering the road so to actually to, to reduce the impact of the heavy infrastructure. Um, we see the uh, Reno um, creative zone. Looking to 2030, we see the, uh, the development of, of uh, increased mixed use around the, 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 the uh, train station. Uh, we see completing the build out on, on Rinium, Lindholm complex connecting it to the, uh, to the, uh, the north, and etc. <laughs> and that would create another last second last one, okay? So said, that would, Thomas <laughs> that would That would actually have 33,250 residents and 45,000 jobs. And my last slide. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about this though. Never look down. Uh, to test the ground before uh, taking the next step. Only he who keeps his eye fixed on the far horizon will find the right road. And that was by Doug Hammerstroh. Mm -hmm. We can leave those off. You can leave, we can leave them on yeah, if you like. So we can, we can say, uh, you, interesting, yes. Yeah. of including business as a driver for inclusion and uh, safety for all. Is this business, trade and industry? Do you see those kinds of businesses emerging in River City too? Absolutely. Um, the integrated healthcare is an example of that. That's a top-down approach where existing businesses in the city, they, they believe that actually that they, they need to bring together, if, if you look at, I think, the 20th century innovation was about was within a particular area, was within biology and physics. I think 21st century innovation is at the intersection of ideas, not actually within ideas themselves. And I think the big, big industry understands that. AstraZeneca understand that, they were talking about. So they would like to see, um, they would like to see other, other perspectives to be on a, on a campus where they could share at an equal level. They see it as important for their business, because as I said, I think the old tradition of uh, you know in heavy industry mm -hmm. being uh, the smokestacks yeah. and, and, and and a totally service industry these things are merging it's not quite so straightforward and simple anymore and I think if that's when you need the confluence of ideas <coughs> uh, just like to challenge that a little because if you if you bring business into uh, into the city and you will certainly also need an infrastructure for logistics around them it's already there. It's, 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 it's already, business is in the city. Business, the, the city actually exists because business, businesses are there. Business is not something which is a nasty thing. People have to have jobs. They have to have employment. And yes, of course, they have to get to work. And of course, the transport system needs to be improved. And it's, it's only for goods, etc. Not a lot of. Uh, if you look at the high value in in um, in at the Lindholm Park, it's actually not logistically very demanding. If you look at the, what we're proposing for the healthcare area, it's not very demanding. Look at the bottom-up industries that we're proposing, where we, it could be somebody wanting to set up their Chinese restaurant or whatever. We see a lot of the, we see a network of support required to, for those businesses, because as I say, many of those businesses that don't come from the formal education sector, many of the people who are actually disenfranchised at the moment, they're not, they haven't come through the formal education system. But actually, those people oftentimes are very entrepreneurial. Bill Gates never completed his degree. So we think, in fact, that actually you should be looking at trying to bring those people into the, into the economy, and they will become part, they will be the main catalyst for social inclusion. You have to commit to me. <laughs>